Raku is, yeah, it was definitely a blunder. And Oleg needs to count. What? 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 Oh, it's checkmate. The queen blunder, and then Oleg allows himself to be checkmated, only to know that it doesn't count. You're not checkmated until it's your turn. And and Bulger uh, providing with his queen the defense for the red queen, which uh, checkmates the, uh, the Polish Grandmaster Draki. World championship match. Yeah, but I, honestly, I think blunder. this is because of... Chess is the first person here. Thank you for cheering earlier, Face Chess. We saw it. We appreciate it. Are you ready for some four-player chess? Hello, Bank Castle. Um, so while you guys are just coming in, we're just going to be chatting, saying hello. We'll wait for people to get here, and then we'll explain the rules and how the format is going to work. Does that sound good, Hammer? Sounds good, yeah. Maybe we can, while people are getting in, we can talk a little bit because we played four player chess both on the same team and against each other. I will say I prefer the former, mostly because Hammer and his teammate beat us, but what was your experience getting to understand the game? Uh, I, I think it's very important to understand the distinction between when you play on a team uh, two against two, whereas playing against three uh, completely different players with different agendas. Uh, so I, I feel like the, the team game of four-player chess is kind of, it's more predictable, but it's also kind of a, a, a very cool team game in terms of having a, a strategy where you coordinate with your partner. That's fair. Which one do you prefer playing? Uh, I definitely prefer team because I, I think it's just you have more control over what's happening. Because in, in, in free for all, when you have three opponents, um, you never know whether or not they're going to come after you. And, and people smell blood in the waters. So if you're having some kind of situation with your king in free for all, then, then you're just going to get the attention of all the other players because they want the, the the points for checkmating you. Uh, whereas in teams, it's a bit more kind of I don't know strategy and 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 you know that uh, no one's going to gang up on you at the very least. So more like regular chess, then you just know your opponents are ganging up on you. Uh, yeah, uh, one one team. Uh, against you instead of uh, three uh, randoms with uh, with different um, different agendas. That's fair. I'm seeing some people in the chat say this looks terrifying. Oof! This looks like it's gonna be rough. Um, we felt I felt that way when we first started playing as well. It was very confusing, but you you do get the hang of it faster than you you think you would. Yeah, and, and we tried doing some, some games and we had such success once we realized to get the queens out. The queens are such powerful pieces on this board because it's a gigantic board and the queen just going from one side to the other, it's, it's an amazing piece. Yeah, I agree. I think for people who are starting to learn how to play four-player chess and they're new to it, the bringing your queens out early strategy is kind of similar to scholars mate in regular chess where you could trick new or lower rated opponents into getting checkmated um, we've seen that the top team players so the ones we're going to be following today for the four player championship have invented their new type of four player opening theory that is a little different but we had good success good success with the queen opening. I, I mean, yeah. when I bring out my queen early in team four-player chess, I win every single time. 
So if these guys could teach me that it's not necessarily the best strategy, I, I, I'm going to learn stuff today. Yeah, and who knows, maybe you'll see us playing in the four-player chess team championship next year. We'll, we'll bring out the early queen strategy. Yeah, well, um, yeah, no, yeah. The thing about this is that these guys are so much better than us at right. this four-player chess. So, so, I mean, our suggestion would just be put, get the queens out and hope <laughs> to get checkmate. But but these guys are so good at defending also. That that's gonna be one of the crucial skills. Yeah. Defending against tricky attacks. Yep. And uh and and that's that's maybe what would what they can do that we cannot. Yeah, and you're right, they're very good because this is a new format, so there's no computer help yet, which is cool because it reminds me of how people used to actually learn chess when they had to discover the openings by themselves, a lot more collaborative and creative. And Magician is saying he didn't realize anybody played four-player competitively. Um, Hammer, do you want to talk about a bit about how this is the first ever four-player chess team championship? Yeah, it's uh, they actually have been uh, playing for months. Uh, there were initially 16 teams uh, participating, and we're now down to the grand finale. These are uh, the two strongest teams in four-player chess, um, and, um, and, and they are going to play a 16-game match. So uh, they are <laughs> definitely competitive. Yeah. You don't get any more serious than a 16-game match. Right. And this final is going to go on over three days. So the first to six and a half points wins. So potentially, if somebody gets that score before it's over, then obviously we're going to declare the winner. There's going to uh, be... Yeah, I, I got it wrong. It's 12 games. 12 it? games, yeah. Um, and, and there's going to be a six-game cap per stream so today the most we're gonna see are six games um yeah what is the time format asks magician and uh that's a good question i feel like it's a very american time control uh because each player has one minute total but the thing is that your time doesn't start to run uh, until you've uh, uh, there, there, there's 15 seconds before it starts affecting your overall game time. Mm -hmm. So this delay thing that I know is being used in the U.S. I, I feel like no one else in the world is using the delay, although it's uh, it's it's an interesting uh, way of doing it. Right. And some people are asking a little bit about the players as well, so we can talk. A little bit about them give some background um so on the first team we have two polish players we have tomish warakomski and wuchek reza um wuchek reza is really good at chess variants so he's picked up four player chess he was also number 13 in the crazy house championship you can tell he has a knack for this kind of thing and on the other side, we have Grandmaster Dmitry Kononenko and Oleg Barantsev. Obviously... Yeah, and the, the game has started. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, I am there. Me... Oh, and we get to see the arrows of the players. Oh, this amazing. I'm just going to fix this a little bit so I can see the top of the screen. Uh, just a second, my layout changed slightly. Okay. Okay, so here we see Reza getting the queen out early. That is also the strategy for Valger. And look at that rating. Valger with the 3,499 rating. That is, that is insane. Wow, that's the highest rating I've seen on a variant that wasn't Tactic Trainer. Uh, and now the blue queen and the red queen enters the fray, but they are being a bit reluctant with the other, with the other queens. Yeah, see here, green doing the arrows. Mm -hmm. He's suggesting to get his queen uh, into 
into the game going up one yeah so he's pointing towards the red king and the blue queen is pointing towards uh the yellow king the thing about the blue queen is that it's pointing in both directions it's pointing against the both kings both the red and the yellow uh okay i would be a bit nervous now if i were um i'm trying if i were red Sorry, one sec. I was trying to draw arrows and then remove them, and now it, now we're back. So, should we explain the order? I think it's pretty intuitive, but for those of you just tuning in, the way it works is it goes clockwise. So, red makes a move first, then blue, then yellow, then green. You can think of the side that has red and white as being white, and the side that has blue and green as being black here. And the person to your left is always considered to be the most dangerous because they get to move before you. I'm pretty sure. So blue has his queen in the middle of the board. Now the yellow queen is entering as well. We see yellow's arrows really pointing towards the blue king, wanting to do something there. Yeah, so green is the only one who is using his queen defensively right now. Yeah, but it, he's kind of, its it has the diagonal where it can join the game at right. the very least. So all four queens uh, have pretty central positioning and it's a complete chaos. That is, that is four player chess in a nutshell. Right. Complete chaos all the time. And, and the arrows, we see both teams actively using their arrows to, um, uh, to, to kind of tell their teammate uh, what they're thinking about and what's, what they're doing for the, next, uh, for the next moves. And the queen gets captured. I kind of like this. I like the queen exchanges because I feel like this game is way too complicated with the queens on. Right. So uh, Once you take the queens off the board, there's a lot less scary threats. And, you know, we might be able to see what they're doing a little bit easier. The pawn promotion... And, and look at the time. Look at the time. Valger is already down to, to 10 seconds. Yeah, so... 10 seconds, that's really low. Valger is the strongest player here. He's created some opening theory. He posts four-player puzzles on their the chess.com club. So he seems to be the strongest player of the bunch, yet he's taken the most time. Uh, I wonder what he's plotting here. <laughs> yeah, and, and also Yellow. What was Yellow's intention with that queen move? Oh, the queen coming down on the pawn close to Green's king. Right. That is that is gonna be that is gonna be a serious threat. Yep. That that is gonna have some serious consequences. And Valger, what is he gonna do about that? Because it's his teammate currently under attack. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruku. Yeah. Raku. Uh, it's his move, and he can take that pawn close to the 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 green king. Right. But he, he's thinking about it. He he's not making a, an ill advised. Uh, consideration okay and look here we see that the queens are going off the board thank god <laughs> um, also uh, so blue is going to sacrifice his queen in order to put yellow in check and because yellow is in check he has to protect his king before mm -hmm. protecting his queen mm -hmm. so if, if blue hadn't checked yellow's king right now then then yellow could have given checkmate on green uh, but uh, now it's uh, yeah, the queens are off the board, and I I feel m much better already. There we go. And and speaking of the checkmate threat, some of chat was asking if to checkmate you need to mate both of your opponents or just one. You just have to checkmate on one of your opponents. So that's why a lot of the times you'll see um, the two teams, the sorry, the two players coordinating for a checkmate on one king. That's all you need to do. Yeah. And right now, I think it's it's basically like a game of chess. They're just trying to take as many of their opponent's pieces as mm -hmm. possible with uh, Reza, the red, uh, with the red pieces, yep. uh, getting that rook in the corner. 
That's true. And an interesting question here is, how does the piece value change in four-player chess, right? Normally, a bishop is worth three points, a rook is worth five. But in four-player chess, a bishop can be worth as much as a rook. So there's no more debate of what's stronger, a knight or a bishop. They just have no, so not, e not even Not even as much. I would go so far as to say that the bishops are more valuable than the rooks. But you say that in real chess, too. So <laughs> I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> But but here it's it's tricky getting the rooks into play because you have all the pawns blocking your rook from getting into action, whereas the bishops on their diagonals are much quicker to get into play. And and both the rook and the bishop can go so far on this board. So um I, I would I would honestly say that it, at, at the very least in the opening, mm -hmm. the bishop just uh, much more powerful piece than the rook. There we go. Um, so, what is the material looking like? It's obviously a little bit hard to figure out here, except for the fact that blue is missing a rook. So potentially, yellow and red should have a small advantage here, but it's it's just so crazy that even a small material imbalance shouldn't mean much for either side, especially with such strong players like they are. Yeah, so yellow has lost a pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, green has lost a pawn. Uh, yellow has lost a bishop. Blue has lost a rook. Uh, green has lost a bishop. I'm very confused. Now, honestly, I'm just trying to count the pieces. Right. and. While you're counting the pieces, I'll just point back to Valger's clock again. That is something we do understand that stays the same with four-player chess and regular chess. He only has five seconds left. He has 15-second um, increment per move, so potentially it'll never become a problem for him. But when Hammer and I were playing four-player chess, it does become very tricky once you get into a complicated position because you just don't have the time to talk to your partner although you can think on your partner's time if they know you're in time pressure yeah i i think if they had the queens still on the board and Ballinger with five seconds that would be a, a serious serious problem but but as it stands i feel like they have reasonable control Ballinger is such a good player that mm -hmm. he should be able to uh make his decisions within the 15 seconds mm -hmm. uh so that his time really never runs further down from five seconds right, right. although as i'm saying that he's being he's letting the time go he wow oh, man. well he's in trouble because it seems like he's getting attacked from both sides right um both yellow and red here are marching their pawns on yeah the... and and speaking of which we got to discuss the en passant rule because uh, Bouncer just went with his pawn to up, and I don't think they have en passant right. in the four-player chess. So, so Yellow would kind of be interested in in taking potentially interested in taking this pawn, right. but he doesn't even get this the the option yep. taking it as if it had moved one one square. Correct. There's no en passant. Yep, chat agrees there. Valger, thanks for the arrow indications. We do appreciate his arrows. It's really nice compared to regular chess since we can actually understand what their plan is instead well, of just I, guessing. We, we can see their <laughs> arrows, but I the arrows are not really enough for me to understand the, the plan. At least you know where they want to go. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes they're just showing kind of this diagonal is great. Although, yeah, that, they're using that it to not... communicate with their team partner, though. So yeah. I, I think it's more than just showing off here. Yeah, you're right. Um, There's just so many of them, so many arrows. Yep. And, and I mean, yeah. Karu I, is the only one who can compete with this. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, Hikaru would be quite good at this game if it was related to a lot of arrow drawing. So it seems like both sides are now starting to develop their knights, and knights are going to be even slower in this variant than they are in regular chess because the board is so huge. So Yeah, but, but knights can have the very important function of checking the kings without pieces being able to 
step in between and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like knights still have their place. Right. Uh, uh, as as a valued member of the uh, the the respective armies. <laughs> oh. But what's interesting now is that none of the players are really going towards their opponent's king. Right, right now, it's more a, a question of trying to capture as many of the opponent's pieces as possible. Mm -hmm. And it also seems like they're developing. So a red just moved his bishop to Fianchetto. Some of the regular chess rules still apply, especially in positions like these that are less sharp since they have the queens off the board. Yeah, and, and these are good chess players. Yeah. Uh, both Valger and Raku are grandmasters at chess. Mm -hmm. so, so clearly some of the skills from chess have helped them in this uh, in in this uh, special variant. Of course, and let's let's not for, forget Reza CZ. He's an FM, and Oleg, who doesn't have a title, is an experienced chess teacher, trainer, has written chess books. So all of all of these players are pretty good. So we will see them following some chess rules here. Okay, now it seems like. Both green, yellow, and blue have their knights towards the center. Red is very close to getting his knight in as well. Yeah, I feel like blue and 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 green are in big trouble because now cannot red just take a green pawn? Kind of, but that's the thing. Taking one pawn isn't really worth the time it takes to kind of to do it. I feel like often in this uh, four-player chess, they they have such emphasis on the moves uh and and respect for that it, it takes quite a few it can be more valuable to put your piece in a good position rather than just capturing a pawn right and that's exactly what reza did he decided to put his knight closer to the center than just taking the pawn on yeah but now Hell this not. knight is the the red knight is about to get captured. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, as is the green knight on on whatever square that is. Right. So th this is a little bit similar to when you're defending with offense in regular chess, right? Yeah. I, this this uh, king move from uh, Ressa is interesting because you you often want to avoid even becoming. Uh, uh, coming into uh, a checking position. So he just moved his king to make sure that the green knight never can give a check. So how should green and blue play this here? We were thinking they were a little bit worse off, but they seem to be handling it well. Uh, green just moved his rook off of the long diagonal where the bishop was pointing towards it. So it seems like they're just preparing for future threats here. They're playing it very strategically. Yeah. Honestly, I lost count of the the pieces. Um, and but I, I did notice that Hesa is is getting way low on time as well. Mm -hmm. So the time situation could affect this game. Right, because Valgar has been doing very well with his time disadvantage. Yeah, he's keep, he's been keeping his moves within 15 seconds. So he's at the same spot he was uh, 10 minutes ago. Um, somebody in the chat is saying, I wish the commentators knew there is a peace balance indicator to the left of the board. Um, I do see the peace balance indicator. I just... But, but it's more kind of... Oh. The, the one on the left that shows oh, the little balance side. One. So it shows that a black, a blue rook is off the board. So technically, red and yellow are up. A they rook. are up a rook. But that that still doesn't tell you who's better here. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that, the thing. That's the right? problem. It tells you who has captured the most pieces. Oh yeah, uh, let me you... show it on the board. Sorry, go ahead, Hammer. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um. There you go. But it doesn't really tell you the potential for capturing pieces mm -hmm. in the future. Um, yeah, chat is saying we can't see the balance. Well, you guys can see it now. If you look uh, in between yellow and blue 
on the layout, it will show the little balance sheet. It's, it's live now. Okay. All right. It's a very weird way of showing the balance as well. I guess it makes sense. Plus five since red and yellow are white means red and yellow are upper rook. Okay, noted. Yeah, but how do you evaluate a rook? Why are you giving the rook a five? It feels like rooks should be more powerful than a five. Yeah, I agree with you on that, which is why. But I'm the sure. the big difference is just the fact that blue has is lacking a rook, and then what's sensational to me is that shouldn't they? It, it doesn't really. It doesn't. It tries to say something about balance, but I'm not sure it's really succeeding because look at Green's position. Green is basically running out of pieces. Yeah. And the balance doesn't really say anything uh, about that. Yeah. Because one player running out of pieces is a very bad news. It means that that player is vulnerable to be getting checkmated. Mm -hmm. But I guess maybe that can be considered strategy. Well, it's so not it's not an also... it's not an engine evaluation. So, I mean, you could you could have sacrificed and have a really nice attack and be down a rook in regular chess as well and be worse off. So, I guess it's just similar to when you're playing on chess.com and it shows you just pure material. Yeah. Well, I I don't think the number I think the number is just <laughs> confusing. You should look at the the pieces that are are kind of indicated. Yeah. And it says that blue is down a a rook but on the other hand look at the pieces blue is blue is having the the blue king is reasonably uh comfortable and and the the kind of the 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 bishops and the knights are really well placed in in the middle of the board and, and the rook is in an attacking position against the red king so i i feel like um yellow and red have been unsuccessful in exploiting the fact that green is lacking pieces because neither red nor yellow it has been able to get their pieces in an attacking position against the green king which is the vulnerable one in in, in this situation i i feel like right now it's red that has to be a bit scared because because red just has two rooks and two bishops and mm -hmm. blue is in a position to get the his pieces towards the the red king right. so the knight can come and the bishops can come and i feel like all the blue pieces are going to be pointing against red right and the, the red is trying to stop exactly that so he saw that blue is, a, is able to bring his knights closer at the very least um green just had to retreat away from red so he had to bring his bishop back so now there's a little bit less pressure on the red king since it's very hard to checkmate with just one color here yeah so green needs to get involved against the attack on red uh but the question is how is he gonna do that right and yes chat just reminding you guys a checkmate, one checkmate is enough to end the game on either side of the king. Okay, so... Okay, so now they gra tr they're trying to grab this yellow rook. Mm -hmm. uh, in which case, and now the material balance is all over the place. Right. Uh, I don't even know what all that means um okay look at this i like this move uh from green oleg is about to bring his rook towards the red king that king is the vulnerable piece yep and and i i feel like blue is gonna get in no blue took the rook interesting i i'm he probably took the rook to make sure that it would defend less because the red and yellow rook were connected here so it yeah. could have been used as a defensive mechanism later on yeah i think this game is turning around i think red's king is in major trouble and yellow has not been able to exploit his material advantage he hasn't gotten he has had more pieces but his pieces haven't been as threatening as the blue pieces right and and now it, it really feels to me like this is turning around and and red's king is in major trouble 
Yeah, I agree. So what they're going to have to try to do now, red obviously has to be defending, but yellow is trying to get any counterplay he can because yellow's pieces are too far to help protect red. So at the very least, he can try and get some intermediate move where he's checking the blue king just so that red doesn't get mated. I, I think this game is basically over. I think blue and green are creating trouble for the red king and that's the only attack that's going on the attacks are so so crucial in four player chess king safety is everything and red's king at the moment is uh not at all safe yeah i i can't disagree with you blue and green are crushing here obviously that doesn't mean that the other players should resign which is why i like that they're trying anything they can here yellow is preparing that check on the blue king things are not looking good but they might as well try but it's interesting because we looked at the material count and the it was kind of saying that blue and green were a rook down but it, it goes to show you that it's not only about which pieces you have it's also about um uh, the placement of your pieces right and, and uh, red and green have been very successful in uh having good piece placements and now they're even going after the yellow king right they're attacking on two fronts now yeah because they'll, they'll they'll be able to potentially win some material from yellow otherwise they're forcing yellow to make a passive move and they can continue the attack on red oh red has a second he almost lost on time yeah, but the time is not going to be the deciding factor here. Blue right. is now going after yellow, uh, the yellow bishop. Um, ooh, and yellow king enters into a check. Um, okay, the capture. Interesting. So now the yellow king is going to take the green rook. But on the other hand, you're also going to lose your bishop. Yellow doesn't have any pieces left. Right. He's about to lose his last piece here. Red desperately trying to stop. But now it's the actually attack. Red who has all the pieces on the board. Yeah. Maybe Red can make something happen. He has two rooks and a bishop. Well, That's he just traded anything. off his rook. Yeah, okay. Now and he's, now he yeah. just has a rook and a bishop. I think things are looking pretty grim here. Um, the yeah, old... <laughs> this is terrible. And and the blue bishop is about to exploit some weak light squares. Right, look and at that. It, it's it's going to come into the, the black, the red position. And it's, it's going to be a disaster. Right, and they don't even have any chances of promoting here to get a new piece. So they're just both on the, the defense. Wow. Yeah, no, this has been, I have no idea what really happened, <laughs> but it, it has been a tremendous first game. Yeah. Uh, Jay Brazel, go, go, Red, don't quit, buddy. You still got this. I mean, you can cheer for them, Jay Brazel, but it's not looking good. Oh, and, and look at that. Red is indicating, go get a new queen, Yellow. Yeah, yeah, as if it's that it, easy. It's just going to take him, you know, seven moves and, and probably in the meantime red's king is about to get checkmated uh, right and i'm not sure why he gave away that rook for for nothing it looks like he's about to checkmate he's bringing in his king as well uh the knight is also very close i think there must be some type of checkmate here it looks like it sh might be forced yeah both red and yellow are out of pieces and blue has what is needed to give checkmate. The bishop is going to join, and it's checkmate in two moves from from blue. Yep. Um, some of chat was asking, can you take your po your partner's pieces? Of course not, because you're on the same team, so you wouldn't want to do that. But it's also uh, illegal. So sometimes you might want to do that if if one of your partner's pawns is blocking a very good square for your queen. That's true. Uh, but right now, it's a win for blue and green. Valger there we uh, go. taking down the king. Uh, and uh, a tremendous attack against red. Right. Uh, crowned with, uh, with the checkmate. Yep. Uh, so they're going to be starting their next game soon. Let me know when you see it. 
Okay. So we are on some, okay. The board is being changed around a lot. They haven't started their next game, but again, it's a six game cap today and they're trying to see who is going to be the first to six and a half points. The final can continue to be two days long or three days long, depending on how close the match is. And uh, that was a uh, a very good win from from Valger and and Oleg, and it just it it seems it seemed to me that red and blue weren't really that well off mm -hmm. losing the rook in the corner right but it just goes to show you how far you can get by coordinating your pieces and and creating attacking chances against one of the kings right so yeah. even with the queens off the board it was all about king safety and and black's king wasn't really feeling it it was uh, under attack from from blue right Okay, the game is supposedly starting now. Uh, Bishop is saying the game was surprisingly long, something you don't see in low level four player chess. Yeah, according to the organizer, the average length of a game is around 25 minutes or so. So unlike us who are starting to play four player chess and you can finish the game pretty early, they tend to get into middle game and end game positions, which is really fascinating. And it, it makes a huge difference whether or not the queens get exchanged. Right. Uh, so so as, as long as you get the queens off the board, you know it's going to be a long game because then you have to coordinate your pieces. Yep. Whereas with the queens, sometimes you just check checkmate your opponent. So now they switched colors. So uh, Raku and Reza are now playing the black side of things i'm just gonna rotate my board so that we can see red on the bottom you have the technical skills to do that uh i will get it yes not sure i would be able but that sounds good so red is the only one bringing the queen into the game and knowing that red is valger uh, that's got to be feel a little nervous, I'm a little nerve wracking. Uh, none of the other players bringing the queens in. That is a bit of a surprise to me. We saw how effective that strategy could be in the last game. Mm -hmm. But now, yeah, all the arrows now are about the queens. They're discussing how to get the queens in the game. Right. So, th yeah, this is interesting because they didn't bring their queens out as early in the first game. So it seems like Valgar has a different strategy when he gets to move first, which makes sense that it'd be a little bit more aggressive. And they're trying to coordinate their queens. Yeah. I, like I, our I strategy. Be, yeah, I would be terrified now with, with the green and blue because mm -hmm. both opponents have their queens out. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just, it's so dangerous. Yeah. It's so dangerous. Yeah, now Red is going to make this move. Red is going to go with his knight attacking the green king. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I was green, I would be seriously afraid. Yeah, I, I would be very nervous about that square. Volger uh, pointing to the, the pawn, which is only protected by the king. The standard weakness in normal chess. We know that's how we get the scholar's mate. Um, and, yep. and now we see yellow and red going after that guy. Since they have played this a lot of times, I'm sure they'll have a nice defense to the Scholar's Mate. But even if they are able to defend it, it seems like they're going to be in a much tougher spot right out of the opening. Yeah, and often you can look at the time management to tell who's in trouble. Yeah. And now Reza is burning through his time right uh because they are in serious trouble and they know it this uh, the, the the queens uh both red and yellow uh are creating some some nasty threats yep and and he's down under 10 seconds he needs to move well this reminds me of valgar being at five seconds really early on in the first game but then again valgar is the strongest player here so i feel more comfortable seeing him get that low on the clock uh, let's remind chat 
for the people who are asking how does either side promote. So they have to get to the 11th rank. Um, so that would be here or here. It's seriously far. Yeah. It's a lot of work for those poor pawns. And honestly, the, the time is worth so much. Uh, coordinating your pieces and, and getting kind of stuff done. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it would basically never pay off, I would think. Right. To, to spend um, 10 moves uh, to, to get a new queen. Yeah, maybe if it's towards the end game and the queens have been traded off and you've lost most of your pieces, then the strategy types starts to if change. If you see a pawn ending in this championship, I'm going to go berserk. That that would be okay, so Okay, that's all we need to see. Hammer going berserk. I'm really praying for that pawn end game now. Um, okay. Because then it's all about getting the new queen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've seen that the pawn side push is very popular. It makes sense because it's pointing towards the opposite king, giving another place for the knight to develop, potentially freeing up the rook. And in this case, it's also putting pressure on the knight. But even if it wasn't, we've seen that this pawn maneuver is very popular. Yeah, but look at those queens. Yeah, the look queens are very nice. Queens. They're go they're going straight for the it's, checkmate. It's, it's it's checkmate, no? Blue has to give up his knight to check the 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 yellow king. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now there's a checkmate threat on green. Blue has to give up his knight so that yellow cannot move mm -hmm. on the use his queen to give checkmate. But right. it's checkmate anyhow because you cannot defend against these two queens. This game is over. It's a 2-0 lead for Valger and Oleg Barentse so, because green cannot defend Can he make himself. space for his king, though? That's why he's trying to move his queen over. Potentially, that might help. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to uh, work out in the long run, though. Right. It might temporarily save the position, but they're way worse off here. Yeah. But Hammer was right, because if green moved any pawn instead, then it would have been checkmate. Yeah, this this is over. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Well, <laughs> Blue again, desperately trying to find some some last ditch attempts. He's considering sacking here, both to distract Yellow and put pressure on the Red Queen. Well, there's there. not really anything he can do. The point one <laughs> seconds remaining. Wow. <laughs> Hammer is it, so rough. It, it's it's not gonna help. Uh, Whenever because... we try to find something to save one of the teams, you're just like, nope, nope, nope. Don't even think about it. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right, Hammer. Is, is, is yellow about to mate? Can you stop queen there? No. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Valgar won again. I'm just going to show to chat why they resigned here. So when it was going to be yellow's turn, he was going to move his queen to the square that I just drew an arrow on, protecting red, and there's no way green could stop it because yellow moves before green here. So he's just going to get mated. And what did we learn from this game? We learned that it pays off to bring out the queens quickly. We Forget did, yes. everything you have learned about chess. This is a completely different ball game. Yes. Bring out your queens. Yes, and we learned something very similar, so no harm in saying that. Yeah, because we played some team chess. I guess uh, Bic and I were, were, were uh, teaming up Yeah. Uh, against, uh, was it Danny? Yes, yes. You and Danny? Uh, no, it was uh, me and, and Daniel Naroditsky, yeah. So still Danny, but a different Danny. Uh, uh, and, and we didn't really know to bring out the queens. Right. Uh, and then we tried again. Someone commented on my YouTube video that you should bring out your queens. And my, oh my, did that work. We crushed everybody. <laughs> my, oh my, did that work. That's how I want to talk about my openings. Um, also, I'm getting a note from one of the tournament directors that they played the... Eichsen Rezak defense, so actually a defense uh, that the 
opposite side had come up with since it has his name in it. That's pretty funny that they were beat by their own defense. Uh, I, I, Ressa played, uh, didn't move first, I think. I think they beat the, uh, ah, you're right. Ressa's defense. Yes, there we go. So basically what happened is that, uh, the, uh, the defense of the Polish player did not really get good advertisement here with the, the, uh, Queens from, uh, from, um, uh, Volger and, and, uh, Oleg, uh, running the board that that's fair but every defense takes some time to figure out so okay I think... i'm just checking to make sure there's notifications every time the new game starts so uh getting the queens off the board can actually be uh, very beneficial because this is what happens when your opponents manages to coordinate their queens you get checkmated. But beneficial for who? Because obviously the stronger team is trying to keep their queens on the board since they're so good at checkmating. Yeah, I, 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 I guess getting the queens off is priority for the uh, blue and green team uh, because they have the disadvantage of the first move. Right. right. Okay, they just started their game. We they played the open here. so fast. Right. So, Oleg... I wonder if I wonder if the openings they prepared, how far they extend. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, there's just so many possible variations that they can go even less deep than in regular chess. So they probably just understand the main ideas, right? And a yeah. couple moves here and there. I feel like maybe three moves max. Okay, so uh, Dmitry Kononenko and Oleg Barentsev are leading the pack here. So 2-0. Um, I hope that we're going to see some type of comeback just to make things a little bit more interesting. And here we see Green trying to get those queens off the board. Yep. Uh, and he, he gets it. He gets the queen off. That is very good news. And now this is clever mm -hmm. from Blue. The queen needed to protect the uh, green knight, because uh, otherwise th that would have been captured by uh, by yellow. Right. Because his queen was hanging, so he wouldn't have been able. Yeah, to he needed it. every time you're in check. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal, because because then your your options are so limited, and, and every time you are in check, someone's going to try to take your pieces. Yeah, um, and. Here, again, we're seeing how important the long diagonals are, especially the queens and the bishops. Super powerful, potent pieces here. Already putting pressure on blue. So if I were blue here, I would definitely want to trade my queen for yellow. Simplify yeah, as fast as possible. But there's no way to do it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, how can you do that without losing your rook? <sighs> Yep, and that's why he's thinking now. He he's in a bit of a he's in a bit of a tr in, in bit of trouble. Here. Right, because if he takes the bishop back and the queen comes in, then he's just gonna lose material. Maybe if the yellow queen gets really far from the king, there's some way for blue and green to get a counterattack. But nothing is nothing is coming to mind. And, and also, green isn't really in a position to get his his pieces pointed towards yellow. Yeah. Yeah, the, the closest one would be the knight, but that can't do much. He's already traded his queen. His bishops are blocked. Which is why it seems like he's doing arrows to try to uh, um, develop his pieces here. Yeah, so green is attacking the yellow queen, but red is going to get the rook in the corner. It's a rook and a pawn deficit for red and green mm -hmm. but it's all about king safety it's all about king safety and there we see blue uh getting the bishop it's a uh it kind of looks like a lefang where you get the bishop <laughs> uh way in there uh, right. attack the rook the rook nowhere to run and, and so maybe this isn't as bad as i originally had thought 
maybe it's not as bad. No, he did find some counterplay here. And yellow has had to retreat his queen as well. Um, now green, with the lack of queens, is just trying to develop his knights as fast as possible, which is what yeah, you should be doing. Yeah, and also he's pointing... Yeah, he's pointing towards Red's king. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay so Brazel, be... you need six and a half points to win the championship. Um, Forktown, who's drawing the arrows, the players or the commentators? So the black arrows are the arrows we are drawing. The blue arrows are the arrows that the blue side is drawing. So you can tell by the color who is drawing them and the two sides can only see their teammates' arrows, so yellow can't see green green's arrows. I hope that was making sense. Uh, Hot Diggity Dog asks, how are the squares named? And that is, uh, that is a big question, because we have files <laughs> A through N. Uh, and basically what I have decided to do is just not mention it. Yep. Uh, just talk about the yellow queen and pieces. Because if I mix in coordinates, I'm going to confuse myself as well as everyone else. Yep. So we're just talking pieces and we're going to put arrows for when we want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, hey, Alec TV and Noda. Good to see you guys in the chat in Forktown. Familiar faces here. But okay, let's let's get back to the game here because somehow Green's Knight has made it very close to Yellow's King. Um But uh, yeah, Blue yeah, is in a lot Yellow's of trouble. Knight Blue is, is in a lot also of trouble. So close to Blue's King. Yeah. Blue has in, his... in general the, the knights are kind of getting to show off their powers. Right. That yeah, they can Queen create... here looks really interesting. Queen taking the pawn in front of the king. Um, because red is going to be able to move and defend his queen with another check before blue is able to move. Yeah, and, and Volunteer was talking about it, and now he's thinking about it. Yep, okay, so he decided not to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing he calculated something and saw that his knight would be hanging. Probably he was afraid of the check, because whenever you get a check in the middle there then you have to be a bit more careful. Yeah, I don't know. I liked your suggestion. I thought that looked really powerful. Hmm. But he, I guess he'd also leave a couple squares that allow green to check in there. So I'm guessing that's what he was afraid of. Who is Valgar? Um, Valgar is playing yellow here. And Valgar is Grandmaster Dmitry Kononenko. He's from the Ukraine. He's a strong GM. In chess as well as four-player chess. Yeah, exactly. He's a super GM in four-player chess, apparently. At least according to the the current strength. And um, he might just become the four-player champion yep. uh, at the end of this event. Yeah, it's definitely not on the same scale as others. Um, but he is definitely one of the best players in the world right now, which is really cool. Uh, Blue's king is in all sorts of trouble. We have the yellow queen trying to lurk itself uh, in to, uh, to the, whatever square this is. Right. And also the, uh, the red knight joining the fray. But on the other hand, then we have yellow's king being attacked by both blue and green. And, and they actually managed to take the queen down. They caught the queen and king on the same diagonal. Well, and... maybe not yet, because red can check the blue king, and then he won't be able to take the queen. Oh, good point. Yeah, it's a hard way to defend here, but it, it is definitely good counterplay. And he, he's using the check where blue can just take the knight uh, okay, they certainly have a plan. There the we queen, go. Saved his queen. The queen is saved and also in an attacking position against the black, uh, the blue king. Right. So checkmate is a threat here right away. Uh, 
blue and green, they're gonna have to try to figure something out before it's yellow's turn to move again. Do any computer programs play for chess? None yet, as far as I know. Uh, Hammer, let me know if you know differently. I I I, I don't know. No. Okay. But it, it, as you said initially, it's it's what makes the game great, right? Yep. Because the players have to do their own research about their own strategies and and kind of figure it out for themselves, and and it's. It's one of the major reasons that this four-player chess is so cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, imagine having to work for understanding openings instead of just having a database and engines and books. What? Yeah, we are someone ha Yeah, someone has to be the pioneer, and uh, it's these guys. Well, you should get in on this soon because then you could have a hammer opening. Oh, that would be so cool. Just because it sounds awesome. I don't know. I, first, I would try to get a hammer opening in chess, right? I feel like I've I've done my part. Now I just gotta lobby it. Okay. All right. Sorry, I didn't want to take that away from you. Um, okay. So somehow blue is surviving this attack so far, but Valgar is a scary guy. Why he's pointing his queen right in front of the blue king, even though it's not protected yet, because he's gonna be able. To, Red is gonna be able to bring the bishop either there or there to protect the queen. And the big question is whether or not green can create some something against yellow to prevent this checkmate. But uh, that if the knight, yeah, he's going to have to move the knight here. But now this knight is just going to get captured by yellow. Yeah. So yellow is, is not going to be able to give the checkmate. Um. But he, yeah, he's going to have to prioritize to take the knight, after which blue manages to get his queen into defense. What? Yeah, oh, he, it's he just checkmate. made it with the pawn. With the pawn. What an embarrassment. That's... The pawn humiliating the uh, blue king. Oh, boy. This is a... I mean, this has been so one-sided. It's a slaughterhouse. Volger and Oleg Baransev has brought their A game yeah, they're to this rolling. final. <laughs> PK Bridge is saying get wrecked. Uh, he certainly did here, unfortunately. That was that was that was very good. Yeah, I I was very impressed here. Well, I hope some of you who are watching are going to start playing some four-player chess your well as well. Yep, yeah, and it's confirmed there is no engine for four-player chess yet, which is awesome. Okay. The king safety, king safety is everything. Yeah. And and, and also, well, it also has to like you said initially uh, during the first game that you need to have both players participating in the attack. Yes. So having one player attack one player, that's not good enough. You need both guys uh, working together uh, to get the king. Yep. And that's why this queen coordination we saw early on looked like a good starting strategy because they were controlling a lot of the board, similar to controlling the center, and their pieces were much more coordinated. Yeah, and we have game four just starting. Um, and once again, Valger, even though he he's not playing with the uh, the, the the pieces that get to move first, uh, he he's blue, so he moves second. Even so, he is the first one to get the queen active, and, and after this rough time. Uh, Raku and and uh, Reza has had so far. I I would be so nervous about about uh, all every time Valger and and Oleg gets the queen out there. Yep. Now they're they're starting to do a very similar plan. Um. Well, v uh, Volger has done a much better job with his teammate at trading queens off when they're on the defensive. But let's see if they're able to do that this time. Uh, 
Okay, so the knights... Actually, what I think is interesting about these top-level players is that they're pretty active about using their knights. Yeah, which is something that's surprising because we were talking earlier about how bishops are much more valuable here and how slow it is for the knights to get in the game. Um, at the same time, it's much faster for the knights to attack the player to their left because of those knight on the rim type moves. And, and also you don't have to move a pawn to get the knight involved. You can just mm -hmm. get it in there and, and, and create some trouble. Right. Uh, and, and also the fact that you cannot block the knight giving a check. I, I feel like that's also an, an important feature Yep. Uh, for the knights in, in, the, in this format. Yep, because it just forces the king to move, which can be really powerful combined with threats from your teammate. Um, okay, all the guys are bringing the queens out. Yep. So red and yellow have moved their queens out much more than, well, a little bit more than blue and green here. Ooh, and look at this Valger indicating that he's about to sacrifice his queen on the the, the yellow knight. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be trouble because yellow uh, yellow's queen is attacked by the green knight. Right. And if he needs to capture the blue, uh, the blue queen first, then that's not going to really work out well for him. Right, because if he can't take the knight battles. and he's not worried about yellow taking his queen because they'll just take yellow's queen, like you said. And generally, that's already good to trade the queens off when you're the defending side of the teams. <laughs> okay, yellow... It, um, Sorry, Reza is trying to get his queen on the center there, defend his own king, attack the green king and the blue king. Wow, look at that move from Valger. <laughs> He was looking at so many sacrificial options, and then he just decides to open up for his bishop. I'm really surprised by that decision. Uh, probably he was finding um, uh, problems with his uh, planned sacrifices. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to have to have a change of plans here. And now Oleg trying to get the queens off, offering the exchange. Um, what is red going to do? Red does have the option to capture the green knight. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause then afterwards you can take the, the green queen and he cannot take it's me how tall all over, right? right? They can only take one of my pieces at a time. Yeah. But then maybe blue could have taken with check as well. And then all the Queens would have been hanging. Yeah. So red chooses instead to get his queen in an attacking position, mm -hmm. pointing both towards blue and yellow. Yep. And it might Wait, wait, yellow is his teammate. Yeah, he's trying to <laughs> he's trying to help his teammate defend here. Ah, uh, yeah. Um but yeah, so yellow now has the option to move his queen. Is he going to trade off? It probably not from from what his arrows are suggesting here. Yeah, I, I think they are comfortable about their no. He, oh, he, he goes changed for his it. mind. Okay, he he went for it. And and he takes with a pawn because if he had taken with a bishop, then the the red queen would have gotten into uh, in in against to this the, the uh, pawn next green pawn. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. We see that side pawn push maneuver again that we saw before and this tends to be much more popular in the middle game from what we've seen although they yes, do open it no. sometimes in the opening depends what yeah. you would call the middle game here <laughs> yeah speaking of red and blue using the same strategy but if i'm i think right now the problem the big thing in the position is the green king so mm -hmm. green has lost his queen, which means that it's more difficult to defend around the king. But mm -hmm. also the fact that you had to move your pawn and open a diagonal uh, where one of the play opposing players might get a bishop or a queen or something. Uh, that sound, looks uh, dangerous to me. Yep, I agree. You, That's a good point here. I mean, red 
Red's king is safe, he has his queen, but yellow, where he's missing a queen, is not in much danger because he hasn't pushed his pawns or opened up holes in the same way. Yeah, so I like, think like Hammer gonna... says, king safety is everything, right? Yeah. So red is going to try to point his pieces against green. It seems like red is being flexible with his queen, but he's trying to start attacking green with his side pawn there. Yeah, I, I think the next move for, for red is bringing the knight uh, for, forward towards the green king. Mm -hmm. And here we see this knight development again. What do you think about the fact that he both uh, yellow, green, blue, and almost red haven't really developed their bishops here? That's pretty rare. Okay, so red does go with his knight. Uh, and now we see that the red queen also pointing against the green rook. Mm -hmm. Uh, Volger needs to create an attack. He, Blue really needs to get in this game to distract his opponents uh, to to alleviate the pressure on on Green. Because if 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 Red keeps uh, um, increasing the pressure mm -hmm. on Green, uh, then then that's going to be the game. Right. So Blue really needs to get involved and and help out his teammate. Yep. And yellow just made a somewhat passive looking move when he pushed his pawn there, since it seemed like red has such a nice attack on green that maybe he could have just helped him out. Yeah, but at the same time, it's a fork. Yep. So I think he's depending on getting his rook into the game by attacking both the blue rook and the blue pawn at the same time. Yep, he's trying to open up the file. That makes Ooh, a lot and, of sense. And now look at red. Red is attacking the the, the blue queen um, so that uh, yellow gets to take the blue rook. Next move. A and blue chooses to save his rook, uh, but now he's going to lose the queen. But on the other hand, he's also going to get to take the red queen. This just got complicated. Yeah, I mean, green, if he moves his knight, then that's the best way to try to defend against a queen loss here, right? Yeah, green, is probably, has... yeah, green is probably just going to take the red knight. He's he's just going to say that. Or the, the pawn so that he doesn't hang his bishop. I don't... Oh, yeah, that's true. No, if that's a serious issue here. Well, they're drawing a lot of arrows as well, so they're trying to figure it out. Um, interesting. So what yellow did was stop that threat so that red can still threaten the queen later on here. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, the knight move just trying to block the bishop pressure on the queen. Yeah, here. but that's bad for red. I mean, he's blocking his own teammate's queen. Yeah, but now he just traded them off. Yeah, but green got now the option to capture the red knight. I'm not. I'm not sure that was fantastic. And now green is going on the on the offense against the the, the red king. But isn't he going to lose a piece here? Because the rook can threaten both the bishop and the knight. I, it's just maybe yeah, it was not the best line. Maybe it was not the best line, but stuff is happening. Stuff is happening. Stuff <laughs> is happening right now. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, all the queens are off the board. That means that uh, the position gets a bit more strategic, a bit more quiet. Yeah. Uh, the the king's safety still matters, uh, but it's not as intense uh, as uh, it is initially. Right. Uh, what is the situation on the uh, on the number of pieces? Well. Let's see. So, blue and green have captured two knights. 
I, I guess we just need to look at the kings. Yeah. I, even without the queens, it's all about the kings. I like the fact that Yellow is kind of in a position to get his rook into play because mm -hmm. uh, he can capture the blue pawn. Not I, anymore. Oh, yeah, not anymore. Um, there goes that plan. And and chat was asking if the players can talk to each other. So I'm checking if they can be on a call. We'll let you know about that soon. But for sure, they can see each other's arrows. And that's how they've been communicating. I, I, I think for sure they're talking to each other. Okay. I, I, I cannot imagine playing this game without having um, active uh, communication. Yeah, communication with your, your teammate. Yeah. Also, it's, it's a skill. Being able to relate to your teammate what you're planning on doing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, honestly, it's it can be as important as making good moves. Yeah, so they, they, they are talking usually on Skype or Discord. Uh, we can't listen to them right now, but Hammer is right. They have to be good at communicating and figuring it out together. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking if Red loses his bishop in front of the king, mm -hmm. then Red's situation is, is terrible. And just as I said that, look at what Valger is doing. The knights are coming in, trying to eliminate that bishop. Right. And I'm thinking that it, it could be 4-0. Just I, I think Valger and, yeah. and Oleg... Because what Green can do next is exactly what they just pointed. Uh, move his knights to check the king, either on the black circle or the other black circle now, because then Red can't take his knight back. <laughs> there we go. But Yellow is protecting. Did they miss this? D that, that he can take the bishop here? Yeah, Yellow had the rook protecting the... Uh... Uh, protecting the red bishop. I just don't think he had an option. He didn't want to move his king in that position and leave the knights like that and lose the rook. Maybe that was just worse. Yeah, I'm not sure this was very good for for blue and and green because I feel like this rook in the corner wasn't as important mm -hmm. as trying to remove this bishop, right? Uh, which was protecting the red king. Yeah, this, this bishop was extremely important. And just in general, the bishops are very powerful in four-player chess. But let's see. Red is going to be able to move next. So he does have the option of protecting his bishop if he wants. Yeah, but the bishop isn't under attack. Oh, right. It's, it's defended by yellow. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure... Blue and green came out of the complications in the best way there. It was very, very clever defensive play by Yellow mm -hmm. to get his rook helping out the, uh, the red king. Right. And now Yellow has his... Yellow is ready to get his rook into play. Red can get his rook into play. And now mm -hmm. Yellow trying to get the third rook also into play by opening up yep pushing that pawn forward so while yellow is trying to get his rooks more active and he's now starting to develop his bishops what blue and green need to do is continue the attack and the attack they had was on the red king not on the yellow king so yeah but i th I, I think the attack is gone i i think red and and yellow are are taking this down and they're now going to be able to capture the the blue knight and 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 the yellow rooks are are getting into play the, this looks uh, suddenly promising for 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 well the, then uh, that would be the first team we see for um tomash and woodcheck that would be impressive if they're able to save this game from the bad attack their opponents had earlier yeah, but on the other hand, I might be completely wrong. I like the confidence hammer. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, just that's the I essence know. of four player chess. I know, I know. I'm just teasing. You don't really understand what's going on. Blue just gave away the full rook. 
But on the other hand, green is probably going to attack red, so red isn't going to have time to take the rook. Okay, trying to. Okay, green attacks this. the red rook. Uh, three of the players are below 10 seconds, so, so they have to make their decisions quicker than they have thus far. Yep. So it's going to be much harder for them to play. Ooh, and then look at this. Sharp Yellow is here. about to capture. Yellow is about to capture the blue bishop. Yellow is going to capture this blue bishop. I really think red and yellow are taking this one down. Okay. Yes. Right. And now red pointing his bishop against the blue king. There we go. Made an arrow there to help out your explanation. Um, yeah, this is looking and, really good. And now good. The, knight, the knight is going to join as well. The knight, yellow, is going to get the knight into play. Get Yeah, yep. there comes the yellow arrows. The knight, uh, the, the, the blue king is very cramped, and it's a knight that, that's going to have the deciding factor here. Yeah, and, and yellow and red have no more pressure on their king anymore, so they don't even have to be worried about an attack. Yeah, they can, they can fully concentrate on attacking the blue king. Yes. All right, well, this is the comeback they need to stay in the game since they've lost 3-0 so far. So what a comeback that would be. I, I like how yellow is just grabbing green's pieces anyways, and then they're continuing their attack just to make sure there's no counterplay. Yeah, blue needs to attack the red bishop. Blue really needs to chase that bishop away from there. Yeah. But... Doesn't seem like... I'm, I'm surprised yellow isn't prioritizing getting his knight into the game. Right. He's just been grabbing pieces instead of doing that. Maybe they think it's easier, given that they both have less than five seconds, to just grab more pieces and then figure out a mate. Yeah, and, and also I think they feel like that blue king isn't going anywhere. <laughs> yep, he's actually trapped by his pieces right now. Uh, so they're just limiting the options for green. And also I think they're toying with the with the concept of of, of getting the, the green king checkmated out of nowhere. It, it looks as if they're the focused on the blue king. But suddenly they're going to turn around and then they're going to go after green instead. Right. Or at least they have the option of going for either king depending on how their opponent is defending. It just, yellow's pieces are much closer to blue. It seems like it makes a lot more sense. Both bishops yeah, there's are There's a pointing. checkmate in, in two moves here. The, the yellow is going to capture the... No. Okay, maybe he's bringing they, the rook. Maybe they miss what you're seeing. Yeah, or I was wrong. I honestly, I feel like the last thing, the ladder there is is more likely. Uh, yeah, they're just they're just taking their opponent's pieces, and who can blame them? That is the best strategy in chess as well. Right. Just, you know, just take your opponent's pieces. If, if you think there might be a checkmate in eight moves, or you can take your opponent's queen. Which one are you going to choose? Well, I'm just, just making a quote for you. Take your opponent's pieces, GM Hammer. That seems legit to me. Yeah, it's it's a definitely a violent strategy. Yep. So, uh, red is down on the tip. Well, yeah, red only has a bishop. But on the other hand, that red bishop is very powerful, pointing towards uh, blue's king. Mm-hmm. I feel like they were a bit, they weren't incisive enough. It seems uh, like yeah, this, mm -hmm. this is a good plan from Red. Red is going to move his pawn and then get his bishop to give a check on, on Green's king. No, but Green's king is running away. Yep. I mean, can't they just continue attacking on the blue king? There you go. He's thinking about using his the red bishop to check the blue king now as well. It's just the blue king is so limited here that it does seem to make sense. But then again, green has no pieces, so they can't really go wrong. 
Yeah, well, you would think so, but red is down to just a bishop. So, so you got to be a bit careful. It, it's always interesting when kind of one part of the team has all the pieces, mm -hmm. as is the situation here. Right. Yellow has two rooks and a knight uh, more than than his partner. So, and in order to give checkmate, you kind of need to have both players cooperating. Mm -hmm. so, so red really needs to keep his bishop because uh, otherwise checkmating with only one player attacking uh, can, can be a bit tricky. Very nicely put. We have been talking about this throughout the match and it's just always good to reiterate that you need both players on the same team coordinated in the attacking effort. Otherwise, it's extremely difficult. So that red bishop, like Hammer just said, is a piece he's going to need to use to come in for the help. I'm surprised by this move from Valger. I honestly, I would have just gone after this red bishop. I, I, I don't understand. Oh, he was going after yellow. I don't feel like uh, red, uh, I don't feel like green and blue should focus on yellow. I feel like they should sh focus on, on, on red and getting mm -hmm. that bishop out of the game. Right. That would make it a lot easier to defend blue, who is in so much trouble here. Yeah, but it's too late. The bishop is is joining right. the attack. And on passant is illegal. But either but even way, the, so. even so, the pawn couldn't move to the side. So. Yeah, because now we're gonna get now red's bishop is gonna contribute. In this attack no green oh very good move by green green is taking control over this square where the bishop wanted to give check but now yellow is indicating checkmate no but it's not checkmate uh just yet and and, and blue manages to eliminate this uh this white knight i think that was a mistake from red and yellow i think they missed that green could help in the defense against the red bishop Right. I don't think it was their intention to give away that knight for nothing. Yeah. Because not only just... do you lose the knight, but you also give uh, the blue king more space yeah. to kind of get away from, from the attack. So they have been slipping up a little bit. Um, and now the red king is moving. So he was, they were worried about green checking the king here. But now the c attack can continue with the blue rook. Those rooks yeah. are both protecting the blue king and putting pressure on red. Yeah, and, and then look at the arrows from Valger right there. He says, green, your job now is to take this red bishop while I'm checking the red king. Yes. And, 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 and that's going to, they're going to turn this around. They're going to win the game, I think. And yellow, yellow is going after the green king. So yellow is going to go with his rook to give a check on green's king mm -hmm. so that red is able to protect his bishop. Right. Yeah, that bishop is so maybe, important to get off yeah, the board Yeah, maybe you here. can prevent it somehow. Or maybe blue can go with his pawn and try to attack and make threats against yellow. No. Uh, Okay, the king that has to good. move. Yep, the check now allows red the ability to move his bishop here. Yeah, but if red loses his bishop, I think this is game over. I, I don't see how you're going to win a game with one player only having pawns. They're going to try to promote. I wouldn't call it over, but it would definitely... Decimate yeah, but their attacking even, chances even here. If, yeah, even if yellow has more pieces than than uh, red and um, than blue and green combined, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that one player is sitting with all the pieces instead of the players being able to coordinate an attack, I think that makes all the difference. And now blue and green are actually attacking red, whose king is in the center of the board. This looks a little bit scary here. 
Uh, not just a little bit. I, I, I think uh, it was their game to win. Yep. They had the attack on Blue's King, but they let it slip. And, yeah. and now... And, and now Red is in major trouble. So I'm just looking quickly at the time situation. Um, so Oleg is the only one who has a little bit more time, as in more than five seconds. And look at this king. It's just going into the center of the board. Well, he has no, no better place to go um, if he would have retreated. I guess he would just face more scary checks there. All right, I, I like the idea of just a, attacking the blue bishop with a pawn well, there. Well, there's a checkmate threat here with the green's rook, right? Yep, that's why he just blocked it off if he would have given check. I'm very confused. Are blue and, and, and yellow on the same team? No. No, no, no. Blue, blue can capture this rook. Yeah, blue can capture it with the bishop. And now he's putting pressure one more time instead of capturing it. I'm not sure why that's happening. <laughs> okay. And now the pawn blocks the bishop's diagonal. That That's probably yep. clever. And note how the green rug is defended by the blue pawn. This is how you can <laughs> this is how you work together as a team. Okay. Um Yeah, and also the uh, Oleg only has the rook left. If Oleg loses that rook, he cannot contribute to the attack. So I feel like the big thing going on right now is the green rook and, and the red bishop. Because those two pieces are so important. Uh, in order to make sure that both players have pieces to help attack to coordinate threats. Yep. Um, okay, so blue and green is either going to lose that pawn here. Does he want to defend that pawn or does he see a, a better move? Maybe his knight can come in and attack some check, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. So. Uh, it's all about this green rook and, and the red bishop. I, I think the the team that manages to eliminate uh, the, the, the opposing partner's last piece, uh, that's the team that's going to take the win. Manage Ooh, a very good, very good move there from Yellow. Yellow gives up his rook in order to eliminate the last piece for green. I think that was very clever. Right, because now um, red and blue both still have pieces while yellow, while green has none. Yeah, and it's checkmate, it's checkmate on the next move. Red is gonna move his bishop and it's check. No, you can block with the pawn. Where was he gonna move his bishop? Uh, bishop here <laughs> kind of blocks the the squares around the, the blue king but he has pawn to prevent checkmate. So I got too excited. Okay, almost, almost. But I, I think we're back into that uh, yellow and, and red are definitely gonna win this uh, because green is, is out of pieces and, and they're just not gonna be able to... Uh, well, maybe blue can try to get um, red's bishop off the board. That would be huge. But no way to do that. I don't know. I mean, yellow and red only have one bishop each. It's actually not that easy. Now they might actually try to promote. So things... Didn't you say you'd go berserk if we got into a pawn end game? Does this count? We're very close. Yeah. <laughs> and Chad is saying, for sure they will win. Haha. <laughs> no, wait. You guys, it's it's a new format. We're, we're all getting the hang of it here. Um... You know, even the world's best players are about 2,200 in this game. So just bear with it while we're figuring it out. I, w I would like to see Yellow getting his bishop on the backside of Blue's king. I feel like Red is in a good position to attack the Blue king, but he needs help from, from Yellow. Right. Okay. 
that can't be taken because they're on the same side and they're protecting each other. No friendly fire. It's interesting that red is moving his king to the center when he has less pieces here, and it seems like... Yeah, but red, I think, is trying to help the, the yellow pawn mm -hmm. move forward and become a new queen. Right. Um, so just a reminder, you guys, they have to promote on the 11th rank in um, team four-player chess. So if yellow yeah. gets his pawns anywhere here, then he is going to promote. Yeah, blonde, uh, blue needed to take that that yellow pawn but now and someone's saying red is in a po good position what he has three pawns um we're not saying he's in a good position but his active king is helpful because he's trying to support yellow's pawn push so his you know is... what to do in the end game you need to get that king into the center in all and variants honestly, <laughs> I, I didn't think that was going to apply for four player chess turns out i was wrong uh, and those kings in the middle are really doing a good job of, of protecting uh, big sections. The king always attacking uh, eight squares at a time. Right. Um, stalemate is a draw, you guys. So if one king gets stalemated, then the game is a draw. For those of you who are asking, is this a solved game? No, not yet. There's no computer engines for four-player chess yet. Uh, theory is new, the players are new, this is the first ever four-player chess team championship that we're having on chess.com, so it's an exciting time. Um, Note how yellow didn't play the bishop to give a check, because that would have been a huge blunder. Uh, as if if you go down here and, and give a check with the bishop, then yep. green king is going to move, and then blue is going to be ready to take yellow's bishop. Yep, just put, drew some arrows to show that. Okay, so these the teams with the same king are in opposition of each other. They're supporting. And red is just going to try to take all of green's pawns right now, which is what he has to do because he's the only player on his team who has any piece left, right? So if he could at least get some pawns, that would be very helpful. I wonder if they have developed any endgame theory. This this is still very, very insane to me. Yeah, you're not alone. Oh, 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 they just pondered the bishop. Look at that. A green gives a check on yellow, and then blue is in a position with his bishop to eliminate the, the yellow bishop. And, and yes, green's king is in check, but it doesn't really matter because blue is now going to take um, yellow's bishop. And now it's we're getting very close to the pawn end game, honestly. Hammer is very close to being berserk. There we go. <laughs> okay. What a turnaround. There we go. This is the pawn end game we all wanted. It's, it's opposite see. colored bishops. I just want to put it out there. <laughs> Uh, we have been told by the organizers that so far in the championship, no game has ended in a draw. But I'm wondering, with opposite colored bishops, it it, it could it could be a thing. Okay. Um... But on the other hand, they also say that opposite colored bishops are great attacking pieces. And this game is all about the attack. So maybe we should try to figure out. So yellow has six pawns. Red has two. So that's eight pawns for their team. The other side only has four pawns. So it's eight pawns versus four. Um, not that that means much in this game, but it's always it, good to know the it material. It could, could be significant. We just don't really know. OK. So who's closer to promoting here? Um, no one really. <laughs> yellow, I guess. I guess this. Yeah, yellow. Yellow's pawn technically is the, the closest, closest to getting there somehow. Oh, how? Oh, sorry. I, I I only saw I only saw two pawns for blue. There's actually three pawns. So there we go. We have five pawns. 
Okay, yellow now. Oh, but there there went uh, a, a yellow pawn. And now blue's pawn is getting eliminated. I, they are just now prioritizing to grab pawns. And finally, blue is getting his king involved. Volger has been uh, very reluctant to getting his king into the middle with the other kings. But now he's, he's, uh, he's making a move for it. Yep. So blue is going to lose this pawn. Um, but red and yellow have a very nice, strong pawn structure here that's held together by the red bishop. That is brilliant. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Oh that is a fantastic pawn chain. But wait, what is everything. this pawn? Do? So this pawn is trying to get, the blue pawn is trying to get to the left of the board to promote. So it can't go forward. Honestly, is there a 50 move rule here? Because I, I feel like this game could take another 100 moves. I mean, this game could take an hour. I'm, I'm, che I'm checking it if there's a 50 move rule. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter because there's so many pawn moves. Right. But it's good to know anyways. Um, yeah. Okay, red is actually the one who's going to get the queen. And yes, there is a 50 move rule. I guess you could discuss whether 50 is too much. Maybe it should have been like a 20 move rule. Interesting. That's fair. Just because it's so much easier to break the uh Those repetition. kings are standing next to each other. It, it is just very player, uneasy. Very yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable seeing the kings next to each other like this. But yeah, it's okay. Um... So, okay, red is actually moving his pawn up the the board. Right, but how is he going to get either pawn to promote wow, look to at the this other move. side? Look at this move. Blue can take this one in two different ways. But red is going to use his move to attack the blue bishop so that blue doesn't get time to take the pawn. That's a very interesting defense here. There you go. Blue has to move. Um, his bishop is back where it was in a safe spot. But unfortunately, he can't do anything with the pawn. So yellow is continuing to push, trying to go for the promotion. Come on, Reza. Yeah, but push now now you lost your pawns defending each other. And green is going after one of the, the, the yellow pawns. Right. But at least now yellow is much closer to getting his pawns promoted. Although yeah, and, and the bishop is controlling where the pawn would try to promote to. And now red is coming with his pawn. <laughs> Be... <laughs> yeah, this game is pretty wild. Uh... And honestly, I, I really feel like this game is amazing without the queens. I, I feel like the with the queens, it's so complicated. And, and and so it it, it very as opposed often... to now and it's super easy right no but that's the thing there's still enormous beauty in the game without the queens right whereas with the queens you just randomly get checkmated and then you get very upset <laughs> fair enough fair enough so that's why i liked our strategy when we were playing mm -hmm. we just decided let's get the queens off the board right well, I like what yellow is doing because he is bringing his king out of the way of where his pawn needs to go to promote. So he should be able to just continue pushing pawns here, which is what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, very, very good. So red and yellow are about to win this game because they both have passed pawns. Right. Where in the center. Right. And if you notice, both the kings are on light squares, so they can't be checked by the dark squared bishop. And also the blue and uh, green king has kind of been shoved out of the game yeah. by the, the, the yellow and, and red king. This is why you got to study your king and pawn end games, obviously. <laughs> so two passed pawns on the board. And those two pawns also look likely to be deciding the game. Yep. I mean, does blue and green have any promoting chances? A little bit, right? That's what he's trying to do. But he can't push because he loses his pawn. Oh, I don't, he can't I don't push like anyway, sorry. Red. 
I don't like this king move from red. I feel like red should have gone in the other direction to make sure that blue's king stayed out. Um, other direction? Oh, you're right. You didn't want to let blue's king in that close. But it's probably not going to make a difference. Well, he can... Yeah, now he can just the pawn... push the pawn up since the yeah. pawn was protected by the red bishop. But I guess yeah. he's overprotecting it to be safe. Yeah. Um, yeah, both of green's pawns are blocked. Okay. But yeah, blue is even going to lose his uh, remaining pawn as the... Uh as the uh, yellow pawn moves up the board. Checking the blue king. Blue king has to go away and then... Oh no, blue has put, used his bishop to protect his remaining pawn. Okay, blue is moving. He's going to try to block these two pass pawns heading this way, just pointing that out once again. Um, with his the king. Yellow yeah, yellow, I like this move from yellow. Yellow is using his king to create an attack with his pawns and king against the uh, the blue king. Uh, and yep, for those of you just coming in, we're watching the finals of the four-player team championship. Red and yellow are on the same team. Blue and green are on the same team. Otherwise, it's very confusing if you're just coming in here. I, if you're just coming in, it's going to be confusing no matter what. I'm confused, and I've been here for uh, an hour and a half. <laughs> it, it is it is very confusing. Um, okay, so... why? Is... Also, you need to talk about which direction the different pawns are headed. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so blue pawn is going towards where red's king is. Green's towards where yellow's king is. Yellow towards where blue king is. Red towards where green's king is. Easy, okay? <laughs> is this a record for number of moves in a four-player chess team game? I feel like this game has been the most epic one ever seen uh, in, in four-player <laughs> chess teams. So clear. Okay, chat, chat thinks it's very easy now. Okay. Um... Why did yellow go back with his king? I felt like he was having a good strategy. Yeah, I don't understand why he didn't continue pushing the pawn there. And, and now green blundered blue's pawn. Right. Can yellow just take the pawn? Well... I think so. The, the green king interrupted the diagonal for blue's bishop. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that was just a blunder. Yeah. Oh, no, because if you take it, then king... Yeah, I feel like red made a blunder as well. If red had just kept his king in place, now blue, green's king is coming for the pawns. Although right. the, the yellow pawn is protected by the red pawn, actually. Right, but the, ye the red pawn isn't protected by the yellow pawn. It is. It is. They're both protecting each other here. It's it's brilliant. Oh, this is so weird. Okay, so yeah, th those pawns are protecting each other. Okay. And and the white king is protecting the other white pawn. This pawn, pawn is friend. is protected by the bishop and by the pawn. Pawn friends says almost no, weird. No, sorry, it's this pawn is the pawns are going that way so it's only protected by the bishop okay sorry i think i confused chat a little bit i was this pawn protected just by the bishop and this pawn is protecting that pawn that's it that's it i'm sorry who just confused who okay Seston thought the pawns were going the other way? Well, I'm not sure which pawns you guys are talking about. 
All right, Hammer, uh, what are your are thoughts here? Move, we are on move 82. Um, this could be the longest four-player chess teams game ever played. Oh, so, somebody's saying the record for numbers of moves is almost 150. Oh. So we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And uh, I think this game is going to be done by then. Because look at those white pawns, those yellow, yellow pawns. Yellow pawns, yeah. Uh, I, I think red and blue has done a great job. I knew that was a uh, discovery check as well. Um, like you said, these pawns are protected. It, it wouldn't green be under able to take the pawn. Yeah, he was able to take the pawn, which is why yellow defended it. So red is maneuvering his bishop to the other side. He's protecting his pawn, which is really important because if black was able to take that red pawn, then he'd make a pass pawn for the green pawn. Yeah, and now it's really important that the red uh, king gets to go on this square in the middle, mm -hmm. pushing the, the, the green king back and, and thereby making sure that the, the, the yellow pawns can uh, keep... Pushing, uh, yeah, the board. and again, his king is on a light square, so he won't be bothered by the bishop, which is on a dark square. Okay, so technically blue is able to take the yellow pawn, but I don't think he wants to. Because it's protected by the red pawn, and also yeah. now the, the yellow king. Right. But I guess there's still a question on how to make progress. Okay, they decided they want to exchange a pawn to create uh, an additional passed pawn way out on the side of the board. It's going to be interesting to see now what Valger chooses to do, whether he chooses to take this yellow pawn. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Uh, but now this yellow pawn has free reign to try and become a queen. Right. And, and also the other yellow pawn. There's, there's two pawns trying to become new queens. You mean the red pawn is trying to become? Oh, well, I guess... No, the the two yellow pawns. Got it. Farthest uh, forward. Yep. So... But how... Yeah, they, they can't take their own pieces. So if the other yellow pawn moves, the, bl the blue king is never going to move from there, right? So it's going to continue blocking the pieces. Yeah, black is trying to do what green needs to do. Green needs to do a long maneuver with his king, trying to stop uh, these uh, these pawns. Right. The, the the green king needs to get involved. It's kind of stuck behind all the action. Yeah. It needs to take a major journey <clears throat> over to the other side. The only issue um, is if he gets his king to the other side, then they have to still take care of the red pawn. Which is also passed and coming towards uh, the eleventh I forgot rank. about that. Yeah. I forgot about that. I mean, he'll he'll need at least one piece on each side. But at least that red pawn, you can kind of. Okay, and now it starts moving. Right. So B blue is doing what he has to do by keeping the yellow pawns blocked, but he's probably gonna have to sack his blue bishop. Yeah, and once again, we have the situation with the red and yellow pawn protecting each other. Mm -hmm. Which is very nice, because right. now yellow is using his king to attack the blue bishop so that he can move his, his king forward. Right. Okay, so he, he moved the bishop away, which is good because it was under threat. But yeah, yellow just and, continues with a pawn push here. Yeah, and next move, that pawn is going to be a queen. So he has to take it. He has to take the pawn. Otherwise, it would promote on the 11th rank, finally, after a very long journey. And, and, and now the, the, red, the red one is moving along. The bishop is going to have to sacrifice itself. And yellow grabs that bishop. No way and to now stop there's it. there's nothing... There's nothing that can stop the red pawn from becoming a queen. Yes. And uh, it's been a 95-move game. 
but it's going to be a win for uh, Raku and, and Reza. Oh, man. Wait, can you try to stalemate the kings? Because he just has to stalemate one king, right? Yeah, because if it, if it happens to be um, Blue's turn and he can't move, it's a draw. Oh, really? Yeah, because if it's your turn and you can't move... Okay, we have a queen on the board. Okay, so queen on the board, tricky situation. Let's see how this mate works. Well, as long as they just keep giving checks, right? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, it's checkmate, no. Oh, because he promotes another queen. Oh, he's promoting another queen. Yeah, That's yeah once the king moves. Well, anyway, okay. Wow! We got a result. 98 move game. That was the, the end game you wanted, right, Hammer? <laughs> yeah, th this was pretty cool, I gotta admit. Oh, man. Wow. Chad is going absolutely crazy. I'm Epic going game. absolutely crazy. My head hurts after looking at that, honestly. That was very hard work, both for the players. That is my general feeling about four-player chess. You cannot play it or, as it turns out, do commentary on it without getting a headache. There's just so many things to be aware of and, and, and yeah. What is the link to the game? Uh, here's the link to the one we are looking at. You guys can also check the other ones. So uh, the score is 3-1. To become the four-player chess team champions, they need to get to six and a half points. At most, we're going to have six games today. So that's two more after this one. So don't go anywhere. And also, if you're enjoying the show and you like... Grandmaster Hammer, you should scroll over his camera and click with one tap to follow his channel where he plays chess and sometimes four player chess. Um, J -H. Okay, and there you go. And sometimes I, I feel like I want to shout out you now. I don't know if I can. I, do I'm going to grab some water really fast before the next game starts. I hope that's okay. Yeah, I honestly, I feel like the players are going to need a break yeah, after that yeah. game. Okay, I, I couldn't do that. It feels bad. Okay, so that was a 96 move game. Uh, apparently not the record. I don't like to see the record game, but um, uh, that was that was pretty epic. Uh, insane game from, from both teams. I mean, both teams played that so well, but I, I think what we saw was that it's it's so crucial that both players still have pieces remaining so that you can create attacking chances. And, and there's definitely attacking chances even when the queens are, are taken off the board. So I, I feel like if the queens are on the board, they're going to create some kind of heartbreak before move uh, 10 even before move 15 but when we get situations when the queen is 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 uh, exchanged for for both for all players uh then we get these fantastic games of 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 strategy and and queenless attacks and and honestly i enjoyed those more because i feel like anyone can checkmate with a queen but when you start getting the pawns and the knights and the rooks involved it's 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 somehow it's there's more beauty in in, uh, in my opinion. I mean, it cre it demands more coordination. That's fair. So the players are taking a five minute break. I was just informed. Deserved five minutes. Yeah, break. sorry. Deserved. Deserved. I almost felt like you were scolding me. Like, how dare I say they're taking a break without pointing how deserved it was? I I honestly kind of was. Yes. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. I mean, after that game, if they had to continue without a break, I would, I yeah, that that would be brutal. Yeah, that's fair. Hammer has respect for the players, which is, which is great. 
Um, Hammer oh. and his love for Queen Trades, says Forktown. Yeah, I'm going to do my uh, no queens emote. Queen Trades, but no bishop trades, right? No trading off your bishops. Gotta appreciate the bishops, but uh, queens, at it. get them off the board. Okay. Um, Hammer should write the first four-player chess book. Well, I think Valger could also write the first four-player chess book. Or uh, Oleg, who actually is a chess author. Yeah, they can work on it together. That would be nice. The four-player chess champions, if they should win, releasing the first four-player chess book sounds uh, sounds appropriate. Yeah. Um, and if you guys want to try and play it as well, I'm going to... Oh, just re refresh the board. Um, I will send you guys the link in the chat. You guys can try it out. Um, you could play either as a team or individual. We've been looking at the team. Um, and I see chess.com chat on four player chess also saying it is more fun when the queens are off the board. I would buy that book. Yeah, we all need the break. Um, Botez and Hammer are fascinating about end games. This is all true. Uh, Gamma Delta actually wrote in chat. <laughs> he got s struck down by Moobot for posting the links. Uh, but but uh, Gamma said that there is a uh, book on four player chess on wiki books or wiki something. So I, I guess uh, people have tried to, to create uh, theory and, and strategy and, and uh, making it known for, for a wider audience through uh, internet books. Have you read any books on chess variants? Uh, no, I have not. If you had to read one, which which one would you read? And say it could be a book that doesn't exist yet. So if you could pick one variant to read about. I would read Helms Knight's book on Bug House. I, I kind of told her when we were streaming Bug House that you, you need to you need to get this written down somehow. Uh, so I, I think that uh, Helms Knight on Crazy House or Bug House, that would be my pick. That's a good pick. I think I would read Valger and Oleg's future book on four player chess because I, I don't really play much bug house, but four player chess is extremely fun in a different way. So I think I would do that. What about you guys chat? Who has the first move in four player chess? Red does. So Bea just said it correctly. Hey, Cash Manky, how are you doing? What's your crazy, what's your bug house rating? I, I don't know, but it's pretty good because oh. the only time I played Bug House with, is with Helms Knight and she carries me to victory all the time. <laughs> okay, so the match is beginning in 30 seconds. Okay. Well, they just started. Yep, they just started. Great. And I'm actually watching it from the beginning. Amazing. Let me rotate to have red on the bottom because that is white. So we're good. And, we're starting. And this is the, yeah, this is the same opening we saw in the previous game. So they are actually having an opening theory discussion mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on what they did uh, previously. And that is uh, suitable for a championship game. That's where the top level players play. So it, it's nice seeing that they repeat openings and have faith in their uh, in their preparations or in their uh, strategies. Yep. Even though it didn't work well the first time they played it, but that's okay because they're gonna improve on what they did wrong. So this. But, is... but I kind of wonder how do they know what they did wrong though? I mean, why did they lose this game last time? I, I honestly, I don't even remember who lost. I feel like this is reminiscent of the first game, which actually was won by Valger and uh, Oleg Baryantsev. Right. Even though they didn't have the advantage of the red pieces. That's true. And 
they were a little bit worse off in the opening, actually. Yeah, that's true. So, but they, they came back with brilliant peace coordination. Right. So maybe um, Raku and Reza think that they got a better position out of the opening and they just have to be a bit more coordinated. So hopefully we'll see that. Yeah. Look at how the yellow and red is using the very same strategy of putting the queen on pretty much the same square mm -hmm. and then coming with the pawn after. Right. Yeah, so both sides here have symmetrical positions. So yellow has a very similar position to red. Green has a very similar position to blue. Well, actually, no, they don't. But red and yellow were closer. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm not sure that necessarily needs to be a good strategy. Right. right. It feels like different partners should have different roles um but what do i know uh red is is looking at how to so he just he, made arrows showing he made that defensive he's defensive arrows. arrows interesting um yeah because blue does have that tricky scholars mate that we have fallen for before all of us here at some point in learning so it makes sense that he's being defensive yeah but we want to we want to attack and also i mean being the first team to attack is such a big advantage right so but isn't red also attacking because he's still kind of pointing towards blue's king here i mean active yeah queens... but the arrows he made were defensive so that's kind of what i'm, I'm that's going what at. you're going for got it so it's not like he kind of made an arrow to point to blue's king he, he all the arrows he made were uh considerate of uh defensive needs trail leo is saying this might actually be worth seriously trying for they aren't at such an impossible level in normal chess i'm totally gonna spend my summer on this well, you could try to figure out this game format since it's so new and be pretty good at it early on. So if you do that, Trail Leonet, let us know how it goes. Yeah, we want to know if you make it to the final next year. Yeah. Remind us of your comment. Be sure to screen grab and stuff like that. Exactly. I, 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 I called this. So yellow is, was thinking about ways to develop his knights in this position. Um, if he goes to the side, it's easier to get towards green's pawn structure, towards his king. If he goes towards the center, the knights are a little more active, but it doesn't make much sense yet. Okay, so he went towards the side. So we see, we've seen... Um, most of the knight moves here so far not most of the knight moves but half of the knight moves have been on the side which is interesting yeah so i'm just gonna highlight those knights so but i note that they are going to the side when their opponent's king is kind of far away mm -hmm. uh, and they're going inwards when their opponent's king is closed so uh, they they go to mm -hmm. to like uh, what would be f6 for instance yeah because then the knight can move uh closer to the and, and give a check on the opponent's king right uh, whereas when the king is on the other side of the board mm -hmm. they are choosing to go with the knight to the side right i don't know why they do that but i i i'm definitely sure it's not an accident right since they both seem to be doing that. Well, the blue knight that was on the side is now being used uh, somewhat defensively, blocking a lot of red's pieces here. Even though red can take it. If you are in check and it's not your turn, what happens? You wait until it's your turn, and when it's your turn, if you have no moves, you lose. So Oleg is getting in a lot of time pressure here. And like you pointed out earlier, that is very indicative of how strong his position is. Blues seems to be under the most pressure here since he's moved pawn. So his king is a little bit weaker. And there's a yellow yeah. pawn right in front of his king. Yeah, and especially the fact that yellow just managed to capture a uh, 
a a green knight while also opening up for mm -hmm. the rook uh it feels like that's where they're gonna focus their attention right now right uh uh red and and yellow going after blue uh and and that king yep and and honestly red and yellow there's not a single check available against their kings yeah and now now it's going to be checkmate no is there some queen takes e7 stuff uh yeah i'm looking towards right that also and what yellow is trying to do to build on what you're saying is he's trying to take the the pawn with check as well yeah green is gonna have to move his queen to defend the yeah. blue king I but mean, i don't think it's gonna be enough i think this is right. just uh yeah game over i mean if it was yeah if it was yellow's turn to move here we would be winning because he would just take and then take but red has to figure out what to do here but isn't this no queen can't take yet because the blue king would take so that looks like it's just a waiting move right since yellow wins yeah. if it's his turn yeah So blue now needs to protect against the knight capturing uh, the pawn with check. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's no. blocking. Yeah, he's blocking the diagonal for the blue queen. For, for the, the red, red queen? Yeah. Um. That's annoying. That would have been a nice... A checkmate to go for. Yeah, but I, I don't see... I don't see blue surviving this. Uh, this is some very serious attack going on. You have been predicting these correctly. I mean, I agree. It's a serious attack. It just doesn't seem like it's a clear win yet. There's nothing forcing, I should say. This queen move baffles me a little, but the thing is that red is preparing to go but with his queen. If, if yellow, down to D. if he, isn't he threatening to take the pawn and then r r queen check with the red queen? Yeah, so maybe bishop has to move in front of the king yeah. to protect. Yeah, but now yellow can take with with check with the knight, but I guess there's no good follow up from red afterwards. Well, there probably is, yeah. <laughs> so he did it, just, okay. He did just it. Just take it, and then what is green going to do? Um, green needs to, I think, protect this queen, the, the blue queen, yeah. Yep. So green is moving to give the blue queen protection. Mm -hmm. Now... Um, otherwise, let, let's just point out to chat what would have happened otherwise. If the blue queen wasn't protected, and red moved his queen here, the blue king... Uh, would would first of all get mated because he's in check. But if he had space, he'd have to move his king, and then he'd lose the queen. But now isn't queen? Yeah, that that uh, Ressa is suggesting the the queen. I, I red needs to move his queen closer to the blue king. Mm -hmm. Um. So I feel like moving the queen down to c7 or whatever the square is would still be a very good move so still having put the queen i in feel like his... yeah i feel like uh white sh uh, yellow should just take this bishop yeah okay there we go now the tactics are happening it looked like yellow sacked a queen but um he he didn't it was the only way to play here oh wow wow yellow it looks like red and yellow had this figured out, but look at the suggestion from Raku. The the green bishop is about to put the red king in check, and that means that blue is going to be ready to take the the red queen. I I, I think I I think. Uh oh! I did they just, they just blunder? I think they may have blundered. You're right. Because yellow has no way to check or get some kind of compensation there. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, but this was a brilliant move by yellow. Because now yellow is putting the king in check. 
and then red is going to open up an attack against the blue queen so we're just have to we're just going to have to look at this and enjoy these players uh doing what they do best and then afterwards we're going to have to do the material count cuz i lost track so do you think yellow and red missed this and now they're trying to compensate with an attack or do you think this was yeah, planned? Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. They 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 missed something. Huh. Uh, I'm, but, I'm surprised he, he moved that pawn instead of opening up the bishop. Yeah, but he wants his rook in the game. I, I think that's what what's happening. But he could have had his red. rook in the game with either. But okay, let's let's see what happens. So, yeah, because now you're opening up for your. Uh, hang on, your why rug. did why did uh, w was blue forced to give up the queen earlier? Yeah, because he was in check. So he was in check. He had to. So that was calculated. Now we have to figure out who is doing better. Honestly, the captures are still ongoing. This is still captures as a result mm -hmm. of that queen trade operation. Right. So so technically, red and yellow are up material here. Um, but Blue's king is looking worse off than any other king on the board. Yeah, I agree. So we need to take that into account as well. So yellow and red, both of those guys have two rooks and two bishops. And those are honestly the most powerful pieces to have. Um, and, and, and blue is, is down a bishop compared to both of the other players. Mm -hmm. I, I think red and, and yellow did make a blunder. They, they hadn't really, uh, con considered the, the consequences or missed some of the consequences of that uh, attack they initiated. Uh, but they came out on top anyhow, and that blue king is not uh, looking good mm -hmm. yellow now coming with his bishop also to put pressure on the king right the blue bishop is both defending the red rook and potentially has some checks in the bag not yet okay so the green rook has gotten all the way to the last file for yellow and yellow just castled we haven't seen yeah. that yet. This is the first castle of the matchup, I think. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. It was good timing, though, because he gets the king out of some trouble created by the green rock. Right. Um, now this... yellow, yellow is just going to give a check. Mm -hmm. And replying again to Chad, who's asking about the arrows. So um, yellow and red being on the same team, they could see each other's arrows. Blue and green can see each other's arrows, and people who are viewing can see all of the arrows. So ye yellow is offering the rook trade here. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised by that, because I, I feel like yellow had a good opportunity to start poking at blue's king. Mm -hmm. But now it turns out it's red taking that uh, mission upon himself. Right getting his light squared bishop on that very long diagonal yeah. toward the uh, blues king. Okay, so yellow had to take back. So red's rook is going to be coming out to the attack very soon, and he's going to be able to develop his bishops as well. Okay, what just happened? Because there's a double attack here. The knight attacks both the yellow rook and the yellow um, bishop. bishop. Yep. I'm I'm a bit confused as to how well, they're dealing with mm -hmm. that situation. Right. Oh, if, I if see what takes... red is doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see what red is doing. Red is preparing for the rook to go after the green king. Yep. So green now, if he takes the bishop, then red but, is going after But what green. I'm surprised about is that yellow blocked off the long diagonal here, which was taking away a square from the king. Yeah, that looked very strange. Yeah. Oh, no, but he's going after Blue's King. <laughs> okay. That You're is. Right. That's the look only way to go. Rocks. That's the only way to go here. Because if the rook would have gone to the other square, then he couldn't go with check. So, makes sense. Oh, but Blue is blocking that plan. Good play by Blue. Right. 
he just totally took off that square. Yellow can't give check anymore. He'll just lose a rook if he does. Um, uh, but they changed their minds. They want to create counter threats on green to make sure that green doesn't get the opportunity to take the yellow bishop. Very good play there. Right. Can't they open spectator mode in a second tag to see opponent's arrows? Um, I'm pretty sure there's somebody who's monitoring their play, so none of that is happening. And, and also, the, they are removing the arrows so quickly. Right. So I, 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 I wouldn't have the uh, mental capacity to follow two boards with. I feel like if anybody would, you would have the mental capacity, but you're being humble, so that's okay. All right. Well, or it's just a very difficult task. Okay. Um, what happened with the rooks? Why is blue the only one with, with the, the rook? rook? Yeah. I looked away for two seconds, and this happened. Well, so red. Well, red and yellow have the two bishops. So the two bishops, bishops are better than rooks in the opening, but rooks are better than bishops in the end game. This seems like it's a middle game. So can we say they're even here? And count no, it as. No, I, I think it has to be about king safety. No, no, I mean, say the value of a bishop and a rook are even oh. here, not the position. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so red has some potential attacks and checks against the blue king, and so does yellow, so that's good. The bishops are going to start being very coordinated. Yeah, bishops are looking like. Beasts. Yeah. yeah, now that's a scary check that blue won't be able to take back because it's protected. Yeah, and also note how red is looking into the possibility of going after some of blue's pieces. Mm -hmm. So red has the option of using his uh, bishop to try and take the rook, although green just defended against that precise idea. Green putting his bishop to make sure that no red piece can attack the, the blue rook. Right. So red chooses just to take a pawn, and now they're oh, honestly going to be Red had double a double checks prepared with that move in the future. I, I think blue's king is in big trouble. I think there's yeah. four bishops uh, hounding that blue king. And the, the position by the blue king is so open as well. Um, and now red attacked the rook the blue rook because he knew that blue had to move his king so his rook is gonna fall yeah wow. the, 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 there wasn't much to do against those bishops right. blue's king was always in danger and uh and there goes the uh the rook yeah okay so Blue moved his bishop back. He realized he needed help to defend his kingside position here, to which yellow just responds by stealing another pawn from green. Oh, let me take that arrow off. I, I need to count. I need a timeout. Uh, red has a bishop. Yellow has two bishops. Blue and green has a bishop each. Look at the pawns for yellow. Look at the... I mean, yellow has six no five passed pawns right mm -hmm. now that is uh when they start moving there's n not gonna be anything stopping them and also um, note that blue blue and 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 green has bishops both on dark squares so that means that for for yellow and uh, and red they just gotta stay off the dark squares and they're gonna be uh just fine right he, he, their kings don't have to worry about getting checks, which is nice about playing against bishops on the same color. Yeah, whereas white has this amazing bishop on the light squares. It's the only light squared bishop on the on the board, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's going to be a big factor. Also, a big factor now. Uh, green is about to lose his only remaining. Uh, piece right uh, and we've talked about this before how that uh, is such a crucial factor and I really like how uh, yellow and red are doing this because yellow is the one who had an extra bishop so he is the one uh, getting rid of um, 
getting rid of um wow and now they're up two bishops although yellow has both yeah, of but, them so it's not yeah. as ideal as if there was a yellow bishop and a red bishop but yeah okay they, they get resigned. the resignation well done but i i do feel like they made a slight mistake there in terms of uh red should have kept one bishop and and yellow should have kept one bishop right so reza and raku are catching up because they were losing 3-0 and now it's going to be 2-3 so that is quite the comeback here wouldn't you say yeah it's it's a big deal for them and and it honestly it's unfortunate that it's just one more game remaining for today because mm -hmm. uh with the uh with with the with the mood they have right now they would have liked to see uh more games being played while they they have the initiative right in the map so the the next game is going to be the last one because it's a six game limit um so once this ends we'll be doing the same event again a week from now on sunday and again the first team to get six and a half points is going to be the team who becomes the four player chess team champions for the first time ever And, and and I mean I I, I kind of like the format. These people are not messing around. Mm -mm. If they, when they are doing the first ever four player chess championship, they are having a twelve game final. No accidents allowed here. They are really interested in finding the best team, and they're going to succeed in that because uh, no one can argue against a, a twelve game match. Right. But, yeah plenty of opportunities for for both teams to show off their skill and hey this is probably the world championship with the least amount of draws right <laughs> <laughs> definitely complete opposite of, of uh norway normal normal chess by norwegians <laughs> yeah no shade at all um and and chad is asking if they get a trophy the prizes for this year are automatic entry to next year's championship. So hopefully as we keep having these events, we'll be able to offer these talented talented players even more prizes than that. But for now, they're super enthusiastic about the game. They're learning, they're having fun, and we appreciate that. I, I think there's honor uh, involved here. The, the honor of winning the first ever championship really ranks high yeah and and otherwise they wouldn't um otherwise they wouldn't be participating right right uh because they are interested uh in uh, they no they have been competing uh, oh since and they November. just started again yeah so. i have i have the game up okay amazing uh so we're seeing similar starting position although so, okay so oleg and valger are now playing white yeah moving first yeah yeah moving first so this is the sixth game which means that the they start to play red and yellow again because the way it's been working is they started off with blue and green yep yeah it's a it's a one two 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 format so so the the first game uh raku and and resa got the the red and um yeah uh red and yellow and then they have been playing in pairs of two games of two yeah um our teammates chosen at random no the teams entered as a team so we've had the same teams the entire time um very nice comeback yeah, and as I was saying, this competition has been going on since November with a prolonged uh, qualification phase. Uh, so, uh, so they have really been dedicated in terms of uh, competing in this tournament and and uh, wanting to 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 show that they are deserving of uh, mm -hmm. being the first four player chess champions. Absolutely, and Merlock, we have been putting red at the bottom of the board almost every game except for one where I made an, a mistake. But yeah, we have been watching it from the same side of the board. But once again, I want to point out that uh, Volger and, and uh, Oleg 
are much more aggressive about getting their queens out early. Mm -hmm. uh, did we just see a queen blunder? Chad is going crazy in four player chat. Yeah, I see it. Um, I assume you just took that queen. They didn't just blunder a queen. What the heck was? Maybe he mouse slipped or something. Ressa is thinking, which does seem to suggest that was a blunder. Yeah, I, I think he maybe meant to move his queen all the way back. That's pretty bad. Uh, but on the other hand, now Ressa is is creating the checkmate threat on on red. Mm -hmm. um, well, Raku is yeah. It was definitely a blunder, and Oleg needs to count. What? 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 Oh, it's checkmate. The queen blunder, and then Oleg allows himself to be checkmated, only to know that it doesn't count. You're not checkmated until it's your turn. And and Volger uh, providing with his queen the defense for the red queen, which uh, checkmates the, uh, the Polish grandmaster, Braku. World champion ship match for yeah, chess. Yeah, but I, honestly, I think blunder. this is because of the intense games that have I, that 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 has been. I, I yeah. that was an amazing blunder, but it wouldn't have happened uh, if not for the, yeah. the amazing games we've seen. You're right. I'm just gonna replay it really quickly. Um, so on move four, um, four for yellow. This is when we saw the blunder happen. Yellow was attacking the green queen, and he probably wanted to move back all the way. He said it was a mouse slip. Oh, that's so sad. I'm, I'm sorry to hear it, Vraku. Um, Vraku had a, a Raku, which means a shipwreck in Polish. This was seriously living up to his name. Um, okay, sorry. I, I mean, in an, as a joke. Okay, so I'm going to keep showing the game here. Queen yeah, takes. that is an unfortunate mouse slip, but yeah, uh, it, it kind of I, I, I don't feel that bad about it, honestly, because it just shows how much drama we've had in this competition today. So this was the, the final sixth game of the day, and we have had a 96 move game. We've yeah. had early wins with the queens coordinating to give checkmate. And now we have the enormous mouse slip blunder. I, I feel like this first ever uh, final in the four player chess, it's had everything. Um, and and uh, the commentator is saying they were almost losing a queen regardless of what he played there. So it wasn't good anyway, but yes, the mouse slip because of the intensity of the games. Oof. Well, that was that was exciting. I'm I'm sad to see that it ended this way after they had such a nice comeback. But two four after it started three zero is not the worst result. Yeah, they they had a sweet comeback there and and then uh, winning two games in a row. But it turns out this Valger uh, and his teammate Oleg, they are gonna be a tough nut to crack. They are definitely the favorites. Uh, going into the uh, to the next stage of the of the final. Um, one second. Yeah, so they are going to be playing again next week. And hi, Birdman. Good to see you as well. So we'll be looking back at the games again. Hammer, are you going to be here again next week or? I'm playing a tournament, unfortunately. So uh, your co-host. Uh, for for the continuation of this championship is going to be none other than uh, Walter Bigfoot. There we go. I'm not sure if Bigfoot is still in the chat, but he has played a lot of four-player chess, so we are going to see him again next week. There aren't any more matches today. Um, and, yeah, there aren't any more matches today because the game limit was six. Storm has been asking uh, this question for a while about how the, queen, uh, the pawns promote. Uh, so if you're red, you need to get your, your pawn to the 11th rank. Same with if you're yellow. So you have to get your pawns here. If you're green, 
You're going here. If you're blue, you're going here. I think that kind of should make sense for you. So, just... and it's uh, it's uh, it's far. Yeah. So I'm just gonna we make actually a square saw here. a green promotion today, which I go. think is pretty cool. There you go. Because I did not think that was gonna happen with the pawns having to move that far up the board. Right. And we actually saw a pawn endgame today. That's what Hammer wanted to see. I was excited to see it as well. Um, and if you guys had a lot of fun, you guys need to check out 4 chess on chess.com. And they also have a club where um, Volger posted two 4-player chess tactics. So maybe after watching this, you guys can go and see if you can figure it out. And uh, the, the, this this match so far, it's had everything. It's had queen promotions. It's had early checkmates, queen blunders, uh, and just in general, uh, very cool play. I mean, just the 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 the, the other game, the fifth game, um, we saw a a combination of of tactics, kind of. He takes, you take, I take, and and so on and so forth. And it lasted for like five moves in a row. Things were just being captured, and and I I definitely lost track. Right. So uh, this is a uh, it's it's a very fascinating game. But I already I'm, I want to warn anyone if you want to try this out, uh, do count on getting a headache. Yeah. Uh, because it, uh, it's tricky stuff. Yep. And if you guys had fun, you should check out Hammer and I's Twitch account as well. So you could just hover over Hammer's face and in between the board. And with one click, you could follow both our Twitch channels, get notified when we go online. Maybe we'll play some four-player chess as well. Thank you so much, LDS Jedi Knight and T and everybody who was here. We are about to raid Bigfoot, who I'm going to be doing commentary with next week. He plays a lot of four-player chess, so stick around if you want to see him. Hammer, do you have any final words? Uh, no, uh, I don't. But thank you for having me, and I, I look forward to playing more four-player chess in the future. That sounds good. All right, thank you guys, and bye to you as well, Face Chess. Thanks for being the first person here. Birdman, you too. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm going to raid Bigfoot. <laughs>